<clears throat> Little red Corvette. Woo! Ooh, that's a chilly dip. Rulo <coughs> XR13. Hola, Gold Star. Angel Velasquez 321. Oh, and Lauren something. I guess you're you're gonna get, you're gonna take the silver and bronze together. That's what's up. I did a little beard trimming. I was getting a little wily. I'm gonna keep letting my my stash grow as long as possible. Though I'm gonna need to. Get, I want a, a, a proper bushy cop stash. I think that would be a lot of fun. You trying to plug your board in? Well, the problem is. One of these chargers didn't work in, I don't think. But just because the end's loose in the cable. Oh, okay. And you can't tell because all the cables yeah, are Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got to, like, get all up, tightened up. Yeah. Hey, guys, I've got a friend. No, oh, these are the questions. Yep. Hold on. Let me see if I can get Grant in the... How do I just go to... Damn it. How do I do this? So, so uh, special guest today... Um, oh. No, hold on a second. No, I don't want to be in that. Don't get out of it. Special guest today uh, is my trainer. Uh, w w one, one of my trainers, but my initial and um, uh, my, my initial trainer when I was making my my Shazam transformation. The guy put twenty five pounds on me in about two months. Well, he and all of the chicken and broccoli that he forced me to eat, uh, and 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 you know, and supplements and and all of that jazz. But great guy, Grant Roberts. Um, uh, Canadian. Some, somehow, I, I keep finding Canadians. I just got so many Canadians in my life. I love these. Love you guys, eh? Uh, and uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to bring him in and we're going to talk a little bit about my Shazam um, uh, transformation and that journey and then also talk about my uh, supplement line flow because um, I, I, obviously you guys can hear me talk about this shit all day long, but I want somebody who is a trained professional in fitness and wellness um, to be able to weigh in on this stuff and kind of explain to you guys, you know, uh, various bits of why we at Flow have created our proteins and pro, pre pre workouts and and collagen and greens and all the other things we're going to be coming out with, coming out with hopefully soon. Um, giving you just a little more insight into wh why we did what we did um, from an ingredient standpoint and how he can weigh in on how those things actually affect the body, just to give you more enlightenment about how it all works. So. Uh, if I can try and get Grant in here, I don't know how. This is where I this is where I fail with this invite thing because I don't know. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Maybe I can invite. No, no, that's not inviting him into the chat. Hold on, Grant, I'm failing you. This is where my. Come on, why is it not working? When you go live with someone, and like, oh, no, 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 oh, I don't know what happened there. Come on, let me see these people. So, Grant, I'm gonna try and make my way through. I don't know why I can't, oh, what's up, Adam Brian Olson? Unable to join, unable to join? What, you don't wanna hang out? That's, that's what's up? I don't know why I can't search a name when I'm trying to bring somebody into the chizzy. Can somebody help me with this? I, I, I swear to God, I've, I've done this before. I've definitely jumped into other people's lives, but why can't I find Grant? Um, um, oh, wait, maybe I can't search. Is that a little search thing right there? Can I search that? Oh, boom. You know what? I just made my life so much easier. Nope. Viewers. Grant Roberts. <laughs> this is this is going swimmingly, guys. This is really going great. Okay, hold on. That's not working either. Um, let me try this. No, nope, that's not going to work either. It's if it's on your page, yes, a request to join you. Grant, can you can you please request to join me? Which I think is the little happy faces down there, right? Did you just, uh, okay. Are you talking to Grant? Yeah. Okay, cool. Leaving and rejoining. Leaving and rejoining. 
My beard and Chuck versus the pink slip was great. Was that like when I had like the massive Grizzly Adams beard that I had grown? <laughs> that was fun with the cheese balls. I actually don't remember most of the names of the episodes, and I certainly don't remember which name went with which episode, with a few exceptions like Chuck versus the beard, ironically, that we just did the table read of. By the way, for everybody out there who who watched our, our uh, Chuck reunion table read with EW, Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it, and, and, and I hope you donated. And if you haven't, please go donate. It's for Feeding America. We're just we're trying to raise as much money as we can. There's still a link in my bio. Please go to that link. Go to the links in Ryan McPartland or Sarah, uh, Sarah Lancaster. Or I think we all still probably have the links in our bios. It's just a, it's a great cause, and, and, you know, and look, and the better it does, not only the more people we help, but, but also the better chances that we might make another one. You know what I mean? Like the, the more outpouring that you guys can show of not just the viewership, but also the help with the nonprofit, the more incentivized everybody's going to be to, to want to do more of those. And I would love to do more of them. And check movies. I'm working on it, guys. <clears throat> Where is Mr. Here? Come on, phone, work. <laughs> I keep trying to hit the happy faces. No, I'm not trying to turn it around. What is happening? Guys, this is... This is ridiculous. Oh! Guys, we're coming right back. Hold on one second. No, you don't, do you? That's what it says on there. Yeah, it's up at the bottom of the screen. I'm... Uh, that's what I'm doing. There was this, I was trying to hit this. This this literally this wasn't even activating. That wasn't doing anything like that. It was just all wonky. Hey guys, we're back. Hey hey everybody, we're back. We're back and we're trying to get <clears throat> my buddy Grant Roberts fit into the chat with me because he's not still in the chat. Grant, you need to send me a request. I would appreciate it if, if nobody else other than Grant sends me requests right now. It would make it easier to find his name. Not that I don't want to talk to all of y'all. I do. At some point. I promise. But right now, or at least for the next 35 or so minutes, uh, we've got... I am confused. But maybe I'll just try with watch it. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. It's Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin. Killed her husband. Did. I don't know. I, whatever that rap is, it's hysterical. Come on, Flow Subs. It's either Marcus or JR creeping like a creeper. Favorite flavor of the Flow stuff? Well, we have different types of products and I have different flavors that I like per product. So my favorite protein is, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, look at that creeper, up, JR Kirschmer. I got to put on a hat. This is horrible. Come out of the closet, JR. We've all been waiting for you to come out of the closet. <laughs> I'm getting my stuff together, actually, because I'm heading out to Wildwood to work out. Hey. Well, hey, oh. You, uh, you know, hey, everybody who's, li anybody? Anybody who's uh, watching my feed right now, uh, if you're not already following Flow Sups, I think you should. W -S -U -P -P -S, please go do that, because we're going to be doing a lot more... Um, lives instagram lives on flow that'll be a little bit more workout specific uh nutrition specific also a lot of fun and then here in in our gym uh where i am right now because i'm trying to get on the horn here with the grant roberts um oh, all right jr i'll see you in a second clean up your hat you look filthy <laughs> i know later bye bye i'm looking at my requests Looking at my request. Still don't see Grant Roberts fit. Still don't see him. Oh, okay. He's in viewers. I got him. Found him in viewers. Hey, hey, hey. In touch with Crystal Roberts. I do. Oh. Oh. You're sideways, bro. What's up? I'll do it the other way. Hold on. I don't know how to do it. I'm terrible at this stuff. Are you on a phone, a tablet, or a laptop? I'm on a phone. Can you prop your phone up? Yes. How's it going, man? <laughs> Two Luddites trying to figure out technology. Wow. The millennials are just laughing at us. Yeah. Hey, Greg, yeah. where in the world are you? Oh! Uh, 
Good one. I, mean, I just reversed my phone. Hold yeah, on. don't do that. There you go. Well, it's Earth Day. That's what it is. Earth Day. It's what? It's Earth Day. It's Thursday? Earth Day. Oh, it's Earth, Earth Day. Oh, that's why you got the Earth. Well, you don't typically have a big uh, atlas behind you? I do, but I, it's especially important today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, happy Earth Day to you, and happy, happy Earth Day Earth. to everybody out there, by the way. I think April 22nd, 1970 is something I just read. That was this our first. This is the 50th anniversary. Yeah, man. Like, what an amazing. And also, by the way, that it is it is the singularly largest celebrated, um, uh, what was the word that they used? Um, uh, damn it. It's the biggest if you're event not... in the world. It's the biggest what? event in the world. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, uh, it's the largest <laughs> event in the world that is a, a secular event. There are larger <laughs> events in the world that are religious events, but the largest, like, no religion, no whatever, just like we all no matter what walk of or faith you come from, the largest we all collectively celebrate is Earth Day. And by the way, it probably should be. I mean, for crying in the night, it's the only place in the universe that that holds life on it. So let's not that, fuck it up. That we know. That we yeah, know. That, that, we, that, that we know of, of course, of course, of course, of course. I'm totally open to that too. I can't wait to go to fucking alien planets and, you know, do alien shit. That'd be fun. Well, two points on Earth Day. One is why do they call it Earth when it's mostly water? Well, because it's actually not mostly water. Well, surface-wise, you're it, right. Surface-wise, surface -wise, it's mostly right. water. But if we're talking about the actual whole Earth, it's far more uh, Earth than it is water. Many more substances, right. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess if there's anything shows us how close we, knit we are in this world is this pandemic. Oh, bro, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's insane how many... Com I mean, obviously, all of us have had so many conversations uh, with all of our friends and family over these last few months. And I'm sure all of us kind of sound a little bit like broken records because every time you talk to a new person, you're basically saying a lot of the same stuff, unless some of those ideas or opinions are evolving, which would be also a good thing. But I'll tell you, I definitely feel like a broken record when I say that I, I really do deep down believe that uh, through all of the shit and sadness and pain and, and, uh, uh, not great things that many of us are, well, that all of us, but then even specifically some of us are will greatly, unfortunately, experienced through this time. My prayer, my hope, my faith, my belief is that this is just, this is going to be some kind of growing pains that we have all needed to go through in some way, shape, or form right. as a homo sapien, as a species, as a globe, as with, with animal and plant and environment and everything. We all right. needed to take this massive slowdown break yeah. and rethink the way we do all the things that we've been doing, like almost all the things we've been doing. And on the other side of this, I really do believe that we'll have a better world if we can seize this opportunity. And if we don't just get to the other side and be like, wow, we made it and let's go fuck it all up again. You know what I mean? And, and that's going to require us voting a lot of that's people right. well, there's, who are there's better people into offices yeah. of yeah. varying ilk. I'm not talking about just one specifically. I'm saying whoever are our leaders, we should, we should elect people who are leaders and not bosses. Right. We need people that have that earn that respect and earn that trust because they genuinely give a shit about other people and the environment and, and right. how we ought to treat ourselves and one another. And if we can do that, I think there's a really groovy, like Star Trekian world on the other side. I think we're going to get our shit together. I think we're going to collaborate in the sciences. We're not going to be battling each other anymore. It's not going to be a matter of like, oh, well, I got that patent, so I get the money. It's like, hey, right. I figured some stuff out and it can help the world. Let's right. go help the world. Let's help people right. stop dying from things like cancer and AIDS and every other disease. Let's figure out how to use CRISPR and get in there and, 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 and collectively. And I know, I know scientists around the world are already trying to do this in some way, but, but you know, taking the, the top of technology being moral and responsible about it but allowing those things to help people sharing wealth sharing technology sharing information because right. like you said all the way back down around a bit right. who do we think we are the nationalism that exists in all of us and there's a lot and look and i'm i'm, I'm proud to be an american amen hallelujah america love it but also i know that by by definition when you identify within your nationality you right. are creating even a psychological barrier to other people on the other side of the world that, are, that don't look like you, that don't, that don't talk like you, that are growing up in a different kind of experience. And guess what? We all get killed by the same fucking flu. Right. Every single, like you're saying, if right. this doesn't tell us, right. like it should have told our ancestors in 1912 when the Spanish flu was flying around, right. that we're all the same bag of meat walking around on the planet, then guys, what are we doing? Yeah, absolutely true. There is a certain anyway. line there. Nietzsche probably said it best, that which does not kill you makes you stronger. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think that definitely applies to this. But again, yeah. I think it's, you know, 
like, look, I'm, I'm so unbelievably blessed uh, that during such a time, I have already been able to save money and have, you know, my property that I uh, have been investing yeah. in for many years. And I've been able to host friends and family here. And I know that's not what most people's experience is. What most people's right. experience is they're trapped. Right. They feel very right. trapped in their home or their apartment or right. with particular people that they don't want to be trapped right. with all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm, I'm aware of, I speak of these things from, from a place of privilege, but I yeah. think that it applies to us all regardless. Uh, and also, by the way, a lot of us are speaking from a place of privilege, regardless of how we're quarantining or writing this out. If you haven't actually caught the yeah. virus, if you haven't yeah. actually gone down and been, yeah. put into a, been put into a medically induced coma and on a ventilator, right. like right. my friend, my friend Nick Cordero is a awesome, yeah, I'm yeah. sure you've been following this, just incredible yeah. guy, amazing yeah. actor, uh, brand new husband and father. They got a little baby at home. He came down with COVID. I haven't even gotten to the bottom of, you know, ultimately all of the details, but ultimately went through, he's, he's been fighting and I think he's actually in a, in a decent place right now, thank God. Good. But all the complications led him to have his friggin' leg amputated. A guy oh who made goodness, his living, man. oh yeah, dude, he's losing his leg. And it's like, yeah. you, and you go, holy crap. Like, you know, even yeah. if I was stuck by myself in an apartment, at least I'm not losing my fucking leg. At least right. I'm not. Right. Like quite literally on death's door. And, that, and by the way, and he lost a leg. At least he didn't die. Right. Yeah. At least he didn't actually pass right. away from, I, I just had another friend, both of his parents got COVID, uh, you know, older, but nonetheless, yeah. both of them got COVID and both died within two weeks of each other. Completely, obviously unexpected. They weren't doing that unwell before all of this. I don't even yeah. know what that's like. And now yeah. they're trying to sit Shiva, virtual Shiva for right. Both of his dead parents. I'm like, I, people right. are getting buried without ceremonies right now. Like, this is uh, so gnarly. It's so it's gnarly. Tragic. We have to love ourselves and love each other and use this right. opportunity to do so. Right. Well, I know this is a big topic for you, Zach, and I know there's a lot of anxiety out there, and, and rightfully so. But at the same time, the message is there's always somebody worse off than you. Oh, yeah. Always. Yeah. So Which, we do have yeah. to count our blessings. We have to be aware that, yeah. that the situation is what it is and somehow make the best of it. Yeah. And, I, and I, I would only add to that one more thing, which I think a lot of a lot of us, uh, maybe all of us, at, at least at some point, struggle with, which is how do you process your own legitimate issues right. uh, without feeling like you're being ungrateful when you apply context and perspective and go, oh, but because a lot of a lot of us do this. A lot of us think it's actually the way you're supposed to live, which is deny yourself. Oh, no, no, no. It's you know, yeah. it's it, it's it, it feels very humble. But I don't right. think that that is ultimately a healthy thing to do. I think that what we need to be able to do is acknowledge that, yes, use context and perspective, acknowledge that you may not have the worst of the problems on the planet and be grateful for that, but still allow yourself to process and handle the issues that are still real for you. You know, as an actor who makes very good money and gets to do the cool things in the world like I've gotten to do, that you could you could go to and I have I've gone down some mental emotional spirals feeling like when I've been struggling and not allowing myself to process it like why I went to therapy that right. <laughs> saved my life because so much of my life I had been like no but these people and that and these aren't real problems and it's like no they are real problems yeah. they're real problems right. don't try to compare them to other people's problems just be mm -hmm. be be mindful that there are other people with other problems in the world and that should hopefully help you to then accept and identify and work through yours so if for anybody out there that's, that's watching definitely use context and perspective definitely understand that there's probably always always somebody that is in a worse shape than you in some way shape or form but do not allow that to deny you the process that you still need to go through in taking care of yourself and whatever issues you might be going through including or, or specifically right now Right. And stuff we're going to get into and stuff that I talk about on my lives all the time, which is if you're struggling with your mental or emotional health, there are so many uh, tools to help you in this right now. Not you know, speaking to somebody, whether they're quarantined with you or not. There's so much online therapy going on. I think therapy is going to blow up after this. There's going to be so right. many people that didn't think they had any mental or emotional health issues mm -hmm. until they had to spend two months with themselves. And all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, like you're white knuckling through this. Why am I white knuckling? Why can't I just enjoy right. being with me? Because you've right. got some things you need to work through. So go find some online therapy that's rocking and rolling right now but also are you eating well are right. you eating right right and are you moving your that's body right. in that's some right. way shape or form and i've been preaching this since day one when people are asking me about mental health guys it is directly immediately importantly connected 
to your physical health. If you are not taking care of your vessel, then you are not taking care of the heart and mind that are within that vessel. They're all super interconnected. And don't take my word for it. You can take grants and you can just read any, any kind of study that's ever been done in the last 20 years. Right. But Grant, speak Exercise on that, please. Exercise is an immediate, <clears throat> immediate antidepressant. Um, you may yeah. not you struggle to get yourself to the gym, but can you, can, you can you can you can uh, you can you sit a little closer to, to your microphone or something? I'm just having a little yeah, a hard time here. Let me see if I can turn it up. Yeah, or, or that. Yeah, well, that's probably more your volume. But yeah, so so speak. Keep going on what you're talking about, and and, and in that, connect for us why it is an antidepressant. What is releasing right. in your well, there's, body there's when you are moving your body? It's the, it's the factors, the, the hormonal factors that take place during uh, exercise, right? Exercise is uh, potentially re produces cortisol, but that is the end of the workout. During the workout, there's adrenaline. There's all kinds of positive influences, basically the fight or flight uh, mechanisms that help us feel better. But don't, you know, don't uh, underappreciate nutrition and the immune system, right? So it's, it's this one big package. We want to take care of ourselves. Exercise and nutrition arms our bodies. I honestly believe that every disease on this planet is the result of a nutritional deficiency, right? Take scurvy, for example, right? Back in the, back in the day, vitamin C deficiency. Scurvy because of vitamin C. That's one nutrient that you were lacking. So that just shows you how, in, how incredibly um, important all the nutrients are that you have at all given times to arm your system. If, you're, if there's a weakness, if there's a, a cheek in your armor, a disease will find it. And then you yeah. arm it through nutrition. And then yeah. exercise, of course, is the ultimate uh, tool because you, you do it to get bigger, stronger, faster. You, you're better prepared to fight for the next day. That's why we exercise. Yeah. But, but uh, we'll talk about um, neurological dop dopamine, serotonin. How much yeah. of that is being released when you're working out, Massive when you're running, amounts. when you're ver – how much is being released when you're running versus when you're lifting weights versus other right. types of things? Well, so that's a great question, Zach. So neurogenesis, the creation of new brain cells, that takes place with oxygen and blood flow. And, and quite honestly, the best way to produce that – is through cardiovascular exercise. So slow and steady wins the race. 65% of your maximum heart rate. So maximum amount of oxygen is still being available. It actually creates a neurogenesis. The, 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 new, the new brain cells are created. I did a study for a year with a school in this. I think I told you about it. And uh, it was fascinating. But what's really fascinating is immediately following exercise, neuroplasticity, the ability to retain the information is there. So what we did with these kids was we put them in a program. It was an, an hour long class. But 20 minutes of the class rotated between strength training and uh, cardiovascular training. And then they would go through the, the regular class. So it was a condensed 40-minute class opposed to the full-hour class. We divided the classroom. Half the kids just did a reg regular curriculum, no school. I mean, no exercise. The other half of the kids did the physical activity and a reduced curriculum. At the end of the year, the kids that did no exercise improved one grade score as expected. The kids that did exercise in a condensed classroom improved three to five grade scores. So it's phenomenal the, the role wow. that exercise plays in your brain. Well, so, think about it. When, when you've got a problem to solve, what do you do? You get up and you start pacing. Pacing. Because your brain is saying, feed me. Give me some oxygen. Give me some blood. Our, we're intuitive. But when we were kids, you and I, we rode our bikes to school. We, oh, we yeah, go, man. We were so we're active. So, oh, man, totally. So kids aren't moving anymore, and they're getting driven, drop, dropped off to school, and it's just not a healthy environment. Copy that, man. Okay, okay. So, um, what what else would you say? And uh, you know, it, quarantine or no quarantine, but right. let's just say since we obviously are in this place right now, what would be like your three? And not just general ideas, but like what are three specific things that right. the folks watching can apply right now? Whether right. it's a body, a specific body movement, or a specific circuit, or a specific even like superfood or something like that, like right. what right. would you, what would you, uh, other than of course uh, uh, recommending all of my flow supplements, all of the flow products, oh, yeah. oh that, that's all, a given. Other but flow but other than that, what are three yeah. takeaways that people can can leave with from this? So nutritionally, you want to make sure that all the essential nutrients are there. It's critically important. But if you want to isolate ones that are very important, greens are very important, right? All those phyto phyto minerals are going to make sure that your body is armed. Uh, also, omega-3 fatty acids, critically important for the brain. It's also an anti-inflammatory, so it's very good for stressful environments. And magnesium. In fact, Zach, I just read an interesting study on depression. Um, the, the people that skip breakfast are more likely to have depressive qualities. Really? Really. Yeah. 
Really? Okay. Well, that's interesting because well, uh, 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 what, what, let me just what, follow uh, up a little bit more. So intermittent fasting, right? Intermittent fasting is elongating the amount of time that you don't eat. And I've always been a proponent, and I, I know we, we've talked about this. I've been a proponent of, of doing intermittent fasting in the opposite direction. Start, stop eating later at night, and then, but when you get up, don't waste too much time. Get your food in you and start because you want to shut off that cortisol, that stress hormone that elevates through uh, the nighttime. And I think that's why we're seeing that uh, you'll have a better benefit and why any depressive properties of having breakfast in the morning shut things down. Remember the post-workout paradox? It's the same thing, right? After a workout, what did, I, what did I give you? I gave you some dextrose, I gave you some protein, I gave you some creatine, and you chugged it down to start repair immediately and shut down cortisol. So cortisol, so that's, that's really one of the trickier things, is that what you're trying to do is keep cortisol low. Manage it, yes. And, and if you don't have breakfast in the morning, your cortisol's high? It's a little bit higher. It keeps elevating over the course of the night because your body's starting to break down. It's starting to use the energy that it had stored through night. Breaking the fast means breakfast, right? We, we, the intermittent fasting, and that's what breakfast means. Break the fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From food. So uh, you, you don't want to elongate it too long. And people tend to make the mistake with intermittent fasting. Well, the longer I go, the better it is. That's not true, right? You want to make sure that you're still eating. If you extend your 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 deprivation of food for too long it actually slows the metabolism so I'm not saying intermittent fasting doesn't work just do it appropriately and smart and i do it in the reverse order i do it longer at night so that's what i was going to get to so i i actually have been because i mean you're you're aware of all of these gut issues that i've been struggling with for the last year or so and gabrielle in new york and you know all the various doctors i've been to and just trying to figure out what this is and i still haven't gotten to the bottom of it which is really disconcerting but i'm just trying to make the best of it regardless right one of the things that I thought would be helpful and one of the things I've been practicing as of late is a lot of intermittent fasting. Um, <clears throat> but like the typical intermittent fasting, which is you wake up, right. you don't eat till much later in the day, and then you right. put a bunch of food into a few, few amount of hours, right. and then you're back, at, back out again. And I've been feeling pretty great. My energy's been great. My, right. my, this, this has calmed down a little bit. I've definitely... Right. I mean, obviously, I've lost mass. I've lost probably 20 pounds since all this right. gut stuff happened. But that was right. less about uh, – that was I wasn't intermittent fasting all that time. It was I think I have something that's in me that's eating a lot of my nutrition, and I've just right. been kind of, you know, cutting down. But um, my, my hope was, well, I'll starve this little fucker out. Whatever this is, I'm just going to not – and, and I've heard that intermittent fasting is helpful in those – uh, well, because um, because in those whatever ways. you're eating is not helpful. It's 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 feeding the the environment that you don't want to feed. So exactly. It's not the intermittent fasting so much as the food that you're putting in there. Well, it's I understand that, John. I mean, I've gone I've gone all all over f high FODMAP and low FODMAP diets and lectins yeah. and yeah. I mean, you know, uh, a friend of mine it swears by the carnivore diet. I've talked to Gabrielle about it. She basically eats it. She's like, oh, it's great. I'm like, okay, well, I'm eating. I've been eating nothing but basically meat right. for days now which sounds crazy and i still can't wrap my head around how can you get all of your nutrition out of all that meat but because the animal that, that had it it got all the minerals from the feet but I, that's what's I, critically important. i get that yeah Must cows eat grass, the grass, the grass right the grass if it's grass fed yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. and then if it's grain fed you're just causing more problem and more information right. so right. the 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 meat of an animal a healthy animal has got all the nutrients you need there was a fascinating study done in the early 1900s by a guy named wilbur stephenson who went to live with the eskimo at that time, or the Inuit, they were called Eskimo at that time, being politically correct. Um, but basically, yeah, because they didn't have any plants and vegetables, did they? Like, that, no, was, nothing, zero. Yeah. He lived off of nothing but animal, animal. Uh, meat and, and blubber, fat. Yeah, seal, and seal, fat, back, and meat, yeah. He said he was in the best shape of his life. Uh, he wrote an article for the uh, Journal of Medicine and said the exact same thing. Everybody basically called bullshit. They said it can't be true. He said, lock me up in Bellevue Hospital for one year. Johns Hopkins was there. Harvard was there. All the major universities were there. And after, at the end of one year, concluded this guy was perfectly healthy, low cholesterol, low body fat, all on an all meat diet. But it was grass fed beef. Yeah, yeah, big difference. Well, I mean, look, I, I, I definitely, I, I, I've, I've known, and we've talked about a lot of this stuff because you know, like I was telling everybody on the last live, uh, as I was introing you, Grant here uh, was my first uh, major trainer in the in the uh, trans. Your first step. Yeah. Well, for the Shazam trans transformation and journey, absolutely. I, I was with you in LA for, you know, two months, two and a half months or so. Uh, then, then after gaining miraculously all that weight that you were putting me through the motions for and eating all of that fucking food, it was so much food. 
which we talked about is the worst, hardest part about the whole thing. It's not even lifting the weight. It's eating all that food. It's like a second job. Yeah. Um, and then after LA, you handed me off to Kyle Ardill up at SWAT in okay. Toronto. And then okay. between uh, 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 principal photography and additional photography, when I was in New York um, with Mabel, right. I was working with Don Saladino out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and all of you guys are so uh, just awesome. And I, and I learned so much from each one of you, which is so cool, you know, because every trainer has slightly different experience and wisdoms and, you know, right. style or whatever. But, you know, so we've had a lot of talks about this stuff. And I'm definitely a, I have always pretty much been of the or at least in you know recent history since I was educated on it that um you know this whole this whole deception within the uh food pyramid that we were handed right. many years ago right. by what's his name uh Ansel Keys. He, yes. Ansel Keys was the first guy that came out and said we're getting fat because we're eating too much fat which of course was an oversimplified theory. He lied to the American Heart Association, he lied to the USDA, created a study that was supposed to be based on 22 countries. But unfortunately, 15 of those countries didn't meet his hypothesis. Yeah, it was like it was nine or something. Seven like countries seven. study, and he doctored it, and basically the low-fat diet was was born, and obesity rates went yeah. through the roof ever since. Well, obesity and all the things heart disease, diabetes, I mean, all, like, the, all the things that are associated. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, yeah, I'm definitely, I've you know, like I said, for for a minute, I've I've been on that train and knowing that we that that is not the way to do it. But to have somebody propose to me, if you eat nothing but meat even like red meat which is by the way right. something my cardiologist has told me not to do something yeah. that my gastroenterologist yeah. has told me not to do they're right. all like mediterranean diet make sure you have a lot of fiber all that kind of stuff and i'm like what is going on what am i supposed well, to believe right now because i that. think one number one doctors don't understand nutrition that's not their forte right so the, i appreciate doctors and they got their specialties and i don't want i'm not going to tell people how to do heart you know surgery but likewise, I would appreciate if they understand and reflect it to the professionals that actually know what they're talking about. So the information they're getting is from 1960s textbooks. It's very antiquated. Even the, the World Health Organization today is still talking about saturated fat. I contacted the World Health Organization and said, why are you dissing saturated fat? What is it that you think is problematic? I'm not saying it's the healthiest fat that there is, yeah. but it's not as problematic as they do. So they wrote back to me and said, here's the study that we're, we're recommending 10% of your diet should be based on saturated fat. I immediately wrote them back and said, did you even read this study? Because what it said was your council of doctors said there was absolutely no evidence of any kind that saturated fat was problematic, but because they couldn't decide on the new number, they just said, let's leave it at 10%. That's a true story. So uh, if all of this information is coming out and these studies are being done, right. and we now have actual data about right. like carnivore diet and all that, how is it that doctors aren't being onboarded to why isn't this common accepted factual knowledge that is being I'm applied to our me, our modern medical practice what is you it's, what, why? it's getting there it's getting there much like grass-fed beef right we talked about grass-fed beef 10 years ago people go what are you talking about where do you even get it now because of consumer demand you're starting to see it you're seeing it in all the grocery stores well no no no, I, no 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 but but fads are one thing i'm talking about why is it mainstream no. medical Right. science adopting right. what seemingly is still only being considered like quack nutritionist like uh whatever that kind of stuff is. why is right. why is that not happening why is it my not even that old gastroenterologist right. who should didn't come out of medical school all that long ago why right. is he still recommending things to me that fly in the face of what is now popular nutritional ideal right. Um, because breaking down the brick walls are very difficult. I will say uh, old scientists don't change their mind. They just die. So if you go back even further, right, look at how we evolved as a species. We didn't have 7-Elevens on every corner. We evolved by eating very limited amounts of food. Most of the food that exists today wasn't there now. We right. can break the world nutrition into to different uh, time periods. For 3.5 million years, we lived off of what we could kill, right, and maybe some berries and whatever else. Yeah. Corn didn't exist. None of, those, none of those foods that we eat today exist. Yeah. yeah. Agricultural <laughs> era started about ten or eleven thousand years ago. Are you? Are you? Just, just really quickly. Are, I, I think you're kind of going to get into things like the plant paradox here, right? A little bit. Yeah. 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 Have you read that book? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay. So, and I get asked tons and tons of questions about it now. As far as we can talk about, let me, we'll get there. So, in ten or eleven thousand years ago. Uh, agriculture began, right? And so man started to, to have communities and the world changed drastically. Yeah. But we also saw the first instances of diabetes, of uh, shorter stature, more 
more brittle bones. All this was because of the induction into this, this change in our food system. And so you can ask yourself now, why are, for example, the African-American culture or the Native American culture harder hit with diabetes? It's because they've been had a shorter period of time to adapt to this crap food that we have adapted to a little bit more than the oh, others. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. So if you look at things in the timeline, so if you want to find where the problem was, go back to the beginning and then see, okay, where did it go wrong? Once we introduced grain into the diet, we saw man get shorter in stature and become less healthy. But it also helped us thrive as a community because it made life a lot easier. Yeah. And then we got into the industrial era where now we started to manufacture food. We still manufacture and create new foods every year. And well, to call it food is a stretch. They're not really food. It's a batch of chemicals. Yeah, yeah. So you can see that there is a consequence to be paid for all of those things. Now, as far as the vegan lifestyle, I support it for anybody. And I know you have a plant-based protein, and that's actually a pretty good protein because it's got the nine essential aminos in there. And that's so important if you're going to follow a vegan lifestyle. It's difficult. It's challenging. But to have a protein that's got all the essential elements in it makes life a lot easier. So, but, but let me ask you though, I mean, is this a case by case basis? Do you believe that blood type, do you believe that genetics determine right. whether or not a carnivore diet, let, let's say, let's say, let's say just those two extremes. You got yeah. like an entire meat diet and an entire plant right. diet. Okay. Okay. So first of all, you have to ask yourself this one question. Has there ever been a society in history that has successfully lived on a vegetarian diet? The answer is no other than in today's environment. So that's a big statement, right? We can see that it's never, ever worked. Um, now, that's to say that it's challenging. It's very difficult in delivering all the essential amino acids, all the healthy fats. Can it be done? Yes. So vegetarians and vegans today can do it, and it's challenging. And I have a few under that I take care of. And so, of course, I'm schooled in that. I don't necessarily promote it, but if it's a person's choice, I'm going to support it to make sure that they get it done the right way. Of course, of course. But I mean, I know you're a good guy and of course you're going to support your clients and you're not and you're also a very chill dude and you're not trying to force anybody to do anything. Right. I'm just saying from from a scientific nutritional standpoint, right. uh, I'm not asking you to con to condone or or not condone either one of these things. I'm just saying, do you think because you've just said that uh, that an entire meat based diet is not just cool, but like, you're good. You get all the things. So long as you're doing grass fed and you're doing all that stuff, you're getting everything you need. You do. I would, if, yeah. yeah. If you're Go doing a, an entirely plant-based diet, vegan, vegetarian, Can how will, if somebody out there watching right now, if they're doing that, what yeah. is your recommendation to ensure that they're getting everything that they need? Uh, or what are some major downfalls or drawbacks that you might see happening? Great question. Well, the major downfalls and drawbacks are basically the B12s, the irons. Right? Those diets are that's quite deficient in that diet. So you got to make sure that you supplement with it. So that's why vegans can thrive in today's culture because you can supplement. You can't do that if you're in it, if you're you know yeah. living millions of years ago. Uh, so the supplementation is critically important. Obviously, uh, if you're going to follow that diet, I do take a greens product. I would say take a greens product every morning. I let it digest before you have your food. Obviously, fiber is phenomenally good for the human body. Uh, you want to supplement with an omega-3 fatty acid. Uh, most of the grain, if you, the problem with the vegetarian diet is very high in carbohydrates, typically. So you're going to have an abundance of omega-6. You want to make sure you've got enough omega-3 to create that balance. Omega-3 and omega-6 should be one-to-one. -one. In a North American diet, even a North American diet that, that's a meat-based diet, it's 14, 16, 20 to 1. And the way to understand that is omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory. Omega-6 is a pro-inflammatory, so it causes it. So you have to be very, you want to make sure that that ratio is one to one. So um, the best sources of omega-3 from a plant base, uh, there's a great algae product out right now. I think it's, it's called Brain Armor, and it's derived from uh, algae. It's the the DHA-EPA ratio is two to one, which is what it should be. Uh, or you could go with flax. I don't really love flaxseed because it tends to promote estrogen a little bit in males, but it's a great product for females. So, But that's your two best sources of omega-3 from a vegetarian perspective. And then, of course, making sure that your protein is a complete protein, much like your product. It's got all nine essential amino yeah, acids. Yeah, all of the aminos. Yeah, necessary. Yeah, percent, percent, percent. one is missing, it's a problem. Yeah. Um, can you hear me all right? Because I got – there's rain is pouring on my barn great. right now. I can hear you great. Yeah. Okay. I can huh? hear you fine. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. I can't hear you at all, but I, if I could go grab my headphones oh. right now, I could, I, I'd hear you, except that it literally – it's just like pouring out there right now. Oh, wow. So cool. I'm a little, it came out of nowhere. 
Um, that ranch looks amazing, though, so, by the way. So, listen, we, let, let's take a few more minutes because um, I think a lot, I'm seeing a lot of little, uh, really, I think, excellent questions or comments coming up, and I would love for you to speak to these. Um, to, to, how do we, if we, if we were to say, <clears throat> go convince everyone to be on right. a carnivore diet? Right. And it's, I'm it's not doing that, by the way. What's that? I'm not doing that, by the way. But yeah, no, 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 no. I, I know, I know you're not. I'm saying, as someone who is who, who believes in its, uh, as I, we just talked about, as somebody right. who believes in its merit and believes that it can be really good. Let's right. say the yeah. new norm is we're all on the carnivore diet. Right. How do we, and apropos on Earth Day, how do we have <laughs> an entirely red meat or meat carnivore diet, right. and uh, also maintain our environment if Cows yeah. specifically are one of the major contributors to right. uh, methane and therefore greenhouse gases. So great point, and here's the answer to the question. So it, it goes in a number of ways. You have to look at the cost of feedlots. So feedlots, number one, adds to the adds, adds damage to the environment because now you're trucking animals across country, and you're also trucking in feed, and then you're producing the feed, which is uh, typically grain, which cattle are not designed to consume. Cattle are designed to consume grass, which is that one-to-one -one ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. So when you when you take in this false diet, the, the cattle go to a feedlot to gain fat. And they get very fat in 100 to 110 days. If you left them there longer, they would die. So if you actually just left the cow in the field, the cow is much happier. You're reducing carbon emissions dramatically. And the emissions from the cow itself are much better because they're not gassy from the, the high-grain diet. So a grass-fed diet produces less far methane. less methane or no methane? Yeah, yeah well, but it's less methane because the, the cow the cow on a green diet is agitated. It's it's not healthy. Right, 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 right. But but even but but even still, let's say let's play that out. There's almost eight billion people on the planet. It's very difficult. If eight billion people on the planet right. needed red meat as much right. as we're saying they might need red meat, even with the less emissions. Yes. How does that work? And also, and in and, and, and conjunction question with that, how do you feel about some of these new meats, these these synthetic meats, these things that we're growing in labs or yeah. whatever? What, what are your thoughts on all that? Oh, yeah, we're going to see more and more and more of these synthetic labs. I don't really love the idea, but it's going to become natural. But I can tell you, Zach, the future for nutrition, and most people are going to want to hear this, but the future for nutrition and protein for the human race is going to be insects. It is the easiest. I'm with you, bro. I love, I've eaten I've eaten crickets before, yeah. like roasted crickets, yeah. and they yeah. fucking taste great. And if we they can do. just have just handfuls of crickets right. or whatever it is, and we right. get all of a protein the way we need it, yeah. dude, I'm so down. That that's the future. So you're right. For for cattle production, it's very difficult to feed the planet because the planet's getting close to max, and it's very very challenging. So therefore, I don't actually say an all meat diet. Make a smart diet, but meat should be a part of your diet. And, and you see the government come out and talk negatively about meat only more so because they're more concerned about those issues of production. And of course, the corn industry is subsidized and it's, you know, they're, they're plowing under corn right now because there's too much. Bro, we, we got to We got to get out. We got to get all the subsidies and all of the, all of the yeah. lobbying and all of that stuff. Why aren't we here. subsidizing broccoli? Us. Why aren't we subsidizing cauliflower? Because they don't, it's, it's, it's not part of the industry. Yeah. Um, bro. Okay. Thank you for all of that. Um, <laughs> just because I, I gotta, I gotta, uh, plug slash want to help inform people on flow subs right. so you're, you're not a paid endorser i want you to be as honest as possible i would love sure. for you to tell the folks out there because right. you know i've been telling you about this journey uh, since yeah. you know I, I, hey man i'm gonna make this up and all this shit we were talking about the pitfalls right. of it and hey man these people right. have tried to do it and those people have tried to do it right. and i'm like as i've told all of my constituency and everybody who follows me and anytime i talk about flow for right. me, this this was not about um, ever. How do I right. go make a business and make a bunch of people from a, much, a bunch of money from people? Right. As much right. as how right. do I literally make a, a supplement that I'm going right. to be happy with? Because we found out I had a um, right. a a way a dairy intolerance. So then I was like, okay, well I got to find yeah. something that's that's veg, that's that's uh, right. plant based. And then yeah. as you know, most plant based stuff just doesn't taste very good doesn't or super good. chalky and or whatever. Most so of it's like, not complete. Right. Screw this. So and and the and, exactly and right. the aminos and whatnot. Although we are gonna be coming out uh, with uh, protein with no amino acids, because some people uh, don't love the idea of sucralose, which is what we have to use to sweeten uh, the right. amino protein, because amino acids have a really bitter taste right. profile. Right. So in order to you know, but right. that, that's down the line. Talk to me 
what are, what are your thoughts and uh, about our various products? And if you could explain some key ingredients in any one of sure. them, about, like people might not understand, like aminos. We can, let's, let's break down aminos right now. Sure. Okay. So, well, there are, there are nine essential aminos that, uh, are, that, that form a chain. And if one is missing, the chain doesn't work. Uh, and that's really what, the what, what, what do, what do, for those out there who don't understand, why are amino nine, why, why, why are aminos so important? Okay, well, protein uh, and why do you take them acid. particularly with protein and for working right. out? So protein is basically a group of amino acids. That's what protein is. And so the amino acids are, are the molecules that form the protein. And you can have incomplete proteins, which most veg vegetable sources are. And that's why most vegetarians have to eat foods in combination to get that. Full right. Spectrum. In order to get the full. Right. Yeah. But meat, so, uh, has, full, missing, meat um, has full a uh, full amino profile. Right. And there's nine essentials. There's much more amino acids, but whenever you hear the word essential in diet, it doesn't yeah. mean that it might be good for you. It means that you must consume it on a daily basis to or basically arm your immune system to provide yeah. the nutrients your body needs to thrive. Any of those things are missing. And it, over time, much like scurvy and lack of vitamin C, over time, it will get you. You're not going to get scurvy tomorrow if you don't have vitamin C. You're not going to get scurvy in a month if you don't have vitamin C. But go on for months and months. Guess what you're going to get? Scurvy. All right, so it's important to arm your body, especially in today's day and age. We need that strong immune system. And the immune system is only given strength when all of the nutrients are there to, to provide. That's how, that's basically everything we do. Uh, energy is one component of a, of, a, of a life, but the arming of the system and the ability to repair and the ability to think and the ability to react are all driven by nutrients and hormonal responses that take place by the nutrients you take in. So really important what you take into your body is, it's got to be as, as high a quality as you can possibly do. And I'm actually writing a book right now. It's a booklet. I'm going to give it away for free. And it's for, especially for right now, for people, how they can eat well on a budget. Because people think it, it takes money, and it doesn't. There's a lot of food you can have that doesn't cost a lot of money. Okay, that's great. Dude, share that. As soon as you, you've got that ready to rock, let me know. Because I want to, I would love to see that. Because I talk to a lot of people about these things, and I want to be educated about it. I don't want to just be like... Because I've heard you can eat healthy on a budget. And then people are like, look, motherfucker, I don't have any money. And I've been trying. So don't tell me that I can eat healthy on a budget if you're not in right. my position. I'm like, you know what? Fair enough. So yeah. if you've got some good information to share with me and share with all of us, I'd love yeah. to hear that. I'll have um, it done shortly. So, so, um, so as far as, as the, the, uh, our, our protein plus that has the amino nines, we've talked about those. Aminos, right. again, just recapping, are essential. Right. Uh, and part of the reason why they're essential, just let me uh, it's so loud, it's so loud. And, and <laughs> I guess he's reparking. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. This is my life. Oh, I yeah. love it. It's like parallel art. Yeah. Um, so amino nines, they yeah. they are a protein you are you're you're by giving yourself a bunch of aminos, those specific, those nine, you yeah. are equipping your body with the ingredients to synthesize its own protein. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So all the, all the roles and protein plays every role you can imagine, right? Your your vision, your, your memory, your ability to, to put on muscle. Pro, basically, every drug on the planet is a combination of amino acids. So they're very, very powerful and they play wow. an important role in the body and deficiencies open the door to disease. It's okay. that simple. Copy that. Is there anything so else uh, in the protein itself? that would be an ingredient that we have in there that I, that you find people to not understand often, but is a very important part of the special sauce. Well, when I look at protein and I like most people do, the first thing they do is they turn the label over and they go, what's the grams of protein per serving? Right? Oh yeah. And then you want to make sure that it's complete protein. And you also want to make sure there's no spiking involved because you can put a lot of cheap protein into a product. Oh yeah. We've talked about grams. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, it's poor. Uh, the only other thing I do is I look at the carb count because when you're buying protein, you're buying protein. You don't want to put the carbs in there. But as you said, you've got to put something in to help promote the taste because it doesn't taste great. Um, stevia is an, an option you may want to play with. Well, we little... oh, no, we tried with stevia and monk fruit, it's a little um, tart, yeah. but it's the, the aminos are just so bitter. I mean, you yeah. know, if you take aminos by themselves, <laughs> yeah. like that's they're, they're gnarly. So. Yeah. It was just trying to figure out that exact yeah. balance of the sweetness to the, to the bitterness. I'll, I'll tell you, Zach, I, I've, I've been around a long time, and I've been training, and I've been taking in supplements a long time since they really kind of began. The original supplements were horrifying. You could not get them down. Like, they were disgusting, and you felt horrible after. So 
we've evolved as a species as far as supplementation goes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Bad. In the beginning, it was bad. Um, let's talk about some of your other products. Since you have a, the greens, which I think is a phenomenal product. I think everybody should take that in the morning. You should let it digest. You should eat, take it before your food. Let it digest. Then has. Some oh, really? Food. Okay. Yeah. So, so start your day with a scoop of greens. Is a good is a good way to get that going? Yeah, give it a little bit of time, and then then go ahead and have some food. Okay. Um, you got what else you got? You got um. Well, our pre workout that I, I that I, I want to yeah. I want you to talk about you know like stem versus pump obviously and why we what you know kind of why we ingredient right. it, like and that why certain people do pre workouts in a different way. But then also right. uh, the collagen, which if you want to just talk about the importance of collagen and biotin sure. and hyaluronic acid, you sure. know, that, that could be great too. Hyaluronic acid. Every time I hear that name, I think of Eva. She's not because of her commercial. Have you ever seen? You think her, of what? Eva, Eva Longoria. Have you ever seen her commercial? Oh no, I haven't seen. No, oh, but, got, but you are. Yeah, got a, uh, uh, Grant. Product. For those out there, Grant also trains our our mutual friend Eva Longoria. Well, he does when we're not in quarantine, anyway. Yeah, we're not quarantined. Uh, anyway, she she pronounces on on TV. She goes hyaluronic acid. It's very cute. Anyways, so with your pre, you've got the citrulline, you've got the beta alanine, you've got the taurine, and actually I like the green tea element to it. So you've got all these, basically the things that are going to help uh, push that workout, and you've got you've got some caffeine too, right? I can't remember the. We do, but that. it but it's it's basically you know uh, essentially all of these products. Selfishly, I was designing so that I liked them, and right. but then also my partners, and we all kind of dug it, which is, I think, the way you've got to design anything, because if you actually don't approve of it and like it, then yeah. why the hell are you trying to get other people to buy it? I'm with you 100%. Yeah, yeah. so, so um, yeah, for us, what was important about the pre-workout was, because as you know, caffeine is great to stim, yeah. but then it also closes you vascularly, so right. you're kind of... Right. It's a little. It's a little bit of a give and take, and it, uh, and and ultimately can not be. It's working against your workout sometimes if you overcaffeinate yourself. Overcaffeinate. Yeah. If you overcaffeinate yourself. So we wanted to make sure that there was just enough caffeine in there, so it did give you that little bit of a pep, little bit of a stem, yes. um, <clears throat> but ultimately favor the vascular side of things to make sure that it was a better blood flow pre-workout right. to really allow right. your blood to get where it needs to get because that's an incredibly right. important part of going and working out. Right. Well, I'll tell you, uh, the only thing I can say, no. oh, Truck, awesome, man. Trucks and airboats. Very cool. Um, Yeehaw. That's very cool. Uh, the only thing right. I can say about okay. pre-workouts is much like uh, – we didn't really answer your question about the difference with humans and the blood type and all that and DNA – Yes, there's a dramatic difference as far as what you can absorb nutritionally from, from one person to the next. One person's lactose intolerant, one person isn't. So pre-workouts are very much the same way. Some people like the stim, some people like the niacin the effect, uh, some people don't want any of that. So it's really, when you talk about pre-workouts, it's really personal preference. It, I, I try a lot of them, and, and to be honest, quite honest, I, I don't do a lot of pre-workout, even though I think it's important, but I, I stick to a, maybe a hot black coffee. Um, yeah. But I do oh like, yeah, I know, I know that. I know that about yeah. Grant Roberts. Yeah. Have you had a hot black coffee? Yeah, yes, Grant. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it brings your body temperature up. It's thermogenic. It increases your oxygen absorption. There's a lot of things that it benefits. Um, but there are a lot of pre's out there, and I think that they're all personal preference. You have the necessary ingredients that, that people are going to need and benefit by, but ultimately, I think it's personal preference on pre's. Um, your protein is from a vegan source. It's got the nine essential amino acids. Critically important. Well done. And it's hard to find a good quality product that, that actually tastes good. So uh, there's not a lot out there, Zach. So good for you. Um, and then the you collagen. Have... Talk, talk to people, t tell us a little bit about the importance of collagen and bites and hyaluronic acid. And how really? specifically? Uh, it's it, like a it, fucking it, like a parade's going on behind me. There's apparently right. a tornado, uh, severe storm watch that's just kicked in. So really, that's fun. Anyway, so yeah, um, yeah why why? Um, why, why collagen, collagen? Why biotin? Why hyaluronic acid? And particularly those things together, and how those can positively affect your life. Well, the best thing they can do is is uh, help repair the connective tissue. Connective tissue is everything, right? You uh, you're only as strong as your weakest link, and the, the the collagen helps to promote and strengthen the connective tissue. Uh, you never want to have a rotator issue. I mean, those are all when you when you think about how versatile that shoulder is, for example that that massive amount of muscle is connected uh, to a bone and it, it's forced move and it's very, it's got, it's very um, mobile. 
you want your connective tissue to be incredibly strong. So uh, all of those collagen, biotin, and, and hyaluronic acids help promote and strengthen the connective chain. Copy that. Yeah. Thanks, bud. See, the, the, it's, it's, so, it's so much better. Uh, uh, not that JR and, and uh, Marcus and I, my, my partners at, at Flow, not that obviously we didn't handpick each one of these ingredients with the professionals that put these all together and source it and all that stuff and taste test it all. I'm telling you, man, doing the big pre-workout uh, taste test days, you got to really throttle yourself because we taste like 20 different pre-workouts. You can only take a little sip. Yeah. Otherwise, you're, I mean, I was wired. Also, yeah. with beta alanine, you get the yeah. tingles like crazy. So, oh, yeah. um, but yeah. it's so, I'm so grateful to have somebody like yourself with the expertise and the wisdom and experience that, you know, that you have cumulative in your life to be able to speak on these things. We'll, we'll do more of this, I hope, in the future. But, yeah. you know, just to help people, just to educate people. I think this is a beautiful opportunity for us to help people understand right. why it is what we're doing at Flow Steps, why we're doing what we're doing, why you're doing what you're doing, and why I think we all need to keep having conversations right. about where we're going right. together. Right. Not just, you know, all the stuff we talked about in the beginning of this conversation about the world and COVID and all that jazz, but right. how we're moving forward in health and wellness. And right. let's figure out some real truth together and get really good diets and uh, not be force feeding people a bunch of food that is only available because they have really great lobbyists with a lot of money. That would be great. That's, that's, a, good, that's, a, that's a good scenario wrap up, yeah. Awesome. Bro, yeah. so good to see you. Good to see you, Zach. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye, brother. Bye.